Okay, morning guys. And this is kind of how I start my mornings pretty much these days. Before I do anything, before I do my hair, put on normal clothes, pretty much do anything like a functioning member of society, usually I'll spend like half an hour, 45 minutes doing like the really, really basic things that I have to like check in the morning. And one of those things is my stock portfolio. I know that a lot of you guys actually were kind of interested. I did a video about like a year ago about when I bought this place, this condo, and a lot of you guys were really interested in those lessons I give as opposed to the fitness side. You were kind of interested in kind of the more like personal finance aspect of it. And so I thought I'd give you a little bit of an inkling into this side of my life as well. If you guys are interested, I'll give a full breakdown on screen. The majority of my money is invested in index funds. For those of you guys that don't know, index funds are pretty much like, instead of you buying one stock, you know, like one, one security, there are companies which pool tens or hundreds of stocks together and then you invest in that. It's an index of all these stocks. For example, a very common one that probably all of you guys have heard of but didn't even really know is, you know, when you turn on like the business channel or even the news or anything at all, they talk about things like the S&P 500. That's kind of an example, which is kind of like 500 of these big American companies. And that way, if you want to invest in the market, you want to be diversified, you can stick your money into an index fund. And there are ones for different countries. There are ones for different industries. I will give some warning. This year has, I'm not exaggerating, probably been the biggest shit show from like an, you know, like a stock market investing standpoint since like it's worse than, it's worse and crazier and more volatile than back in 08 with the Great Recession. It's literally the craziest time since people have been comparing it to like the Great Depression. Cause like the drop that we had because of this coronavirus crap was that big. Fortunately, the recovery has been that big and that fast as well. But even then it's just, that's why I've heard a lot of people would say, and I, I believe in this, is that don't get into this or buy anything that if you have to sell it within like the next five years. I've even heard 10 years. If you're gonna buy something and you're not sure about the money that you put into it because you might need it for something else, mortgage, tuition for your kids, college, all these different you know things, then you shouldn't, you shouldn't probably be doing this. But if you have some money, which you can put away for, like in my case, things like retirement, things like long term, something long term, something in my 40s or and onward, yeah, go ahead. I believe if you were to actually look at the long term, like over the last, what, 60 or 100 years of the S&P 500, although you have really good days, really, I mean, really good years where you're up 20% or bad years where you're down 10, 15%, overall, on average, the S&P 500 is up like an annualized rate of around, I think it was like 9, 9 to 10%, uh, which is miles ahead of the bullshit, like what, 1% rate you're going to get uh, for your, you know, for your local uh, checking account or savings account at Wells Fargo or, or Bank of America, which is like chump change. All right, guys. Also, one more thing. We have to have my pre-workout, which in this case today, I'm actually, what I've been doing is kind of like a combination. And yes, I know it's a little weird. I do use mason jars for like my pre-workouts and mixing and protein shakes. I don't know. I just, I find them to be a lot easier than just regular shaker cups because these never leak. So what I've been doing is actually combining uh, my pre-workout, which is as always is my proteins, uh, the pre-workout. And I've been combining it with not too much, just like one scoop or so of clear whey isolate. In this case, this is my new favorite flavor. This is wild cherry. Oh, also one awesome major key. I talked about this on my Instagram, but I never actually talked about it uh, with you guys. If you want to make your like shake, like it's pretty good. It's like an eight out of 10, but if you wanna make it taste even better, if you give it a sparkling water, I usually do like half a can, you mix that in there, it legit tastes like a red or white uh, zero calorie monster. It tastes like by regular standards, pretty damn good. But by protein shake standards, it's like godlike considering like I'm really sick of just that standard like fudge brownie or like, chocolate, caramel, all like the dairy thick ones. I'm just like, after 10 years of me taking that, I'm I'm over it. Also guys, right now, if you use my code VITVIP, normally it gives you 40% off, like, you know, throughout the other, the rest of the year. But right now, like 
when you see this video and the next day, Friday and Saturday, they're having like their end of summer sale. So it'll work for 55% off. So it's like more than half up. Link in description box below. I'm done talking. Let's get to the gym. Okay guys, workout commentary. Let's go. Actually, well, I'm not, I'm not gonna call this commentary. I'm gonna throw some uh, training footage on screen right now. A lot of this is going to be over my most recent, the, the last few like six to seven weeks worth of leg days. And pretty much all I'm gonna show you is the squats because let's be honest, I don't think many of you care that much to see me do leg extensions for 20 minutes. Look, I'll be honest right now that my squat is not going to be a tremendous amount of weight by YouTube standards, or to be honest, even my standards just maybe like two-ish years ago. You guys know that uh, I have had sort of a love-hate relationship with the squat due to some uh, prior injuries, due to uh, Accutane having like, you know, not the best results on my joints, particularly my knees. So it's been of a difficult situation. I mean, I haven't really gone over like too heavy. I haven't gone over like 365 on the squat since probably like uh, 2018. And then four months off uh, during quarantine with essentially zero heavy leg training, it's definitely taken a toll a bit on my legs. But obviously there is a good distance. There's still a lot left to go, but that's okay because it makes me feel, again, like, like kind of mentioned like in my previous video, this is the theme of that video, this video, hell, this is the theme of my entire, my entire channel probably over the next few months is kind of like rebuilding and kind of feeling sort of like I'm 19 or I'm 20 all over again. I vividly remember when I was like 19, 20 years old and I was in my gym uh, back in university, like my college recreation center and uh, I would squat 225, two plates, which is kind of what I started off with uh, once again, for just four sets of eight back at the end of July when I finally got back in the gym. And I've been moving up ever since from there, following again, very simple linear programming, similar to my overhead press, as I uh, mentioned in my previous video, just four sets of eight, trying to go up five to 10 pounds, essentially like every training session, maybe every other training session, nice and standard. And then eventually down the road where it gets to a point where I can no longer progress this way, I'll switch to something more complicated. However, because right now I'm still rebuilding so much of the muscle that I lost in the past, it's coming back fast. Normally I would never be able to just keep on going and putting on 10 pounds week after week. That's ridiculous. That's how like a noob trains. But right now, after four-ish more months off, my legs for all intents and purposes are kind of noob legs. And so as crappy as that is, it's also great because the progress is fast. I mean, overall, like, yeah, I will admit, it's not a fun feeling to go from like, I think my max all time was 425, which is just like uh, four plates and then a 10 on either side. I've done like three and a half plates, 365 for like sets of eight in the past to go from that to 265, which is like two plates and some change, even though I'm doing it for obviously a lot more sets and reps. And so in that case, I do have to take it with a little bit of a, a little bit of a grain of salt and a little grain of positivity and use that as motivation that like, if I can get back this quick, then maybe this distance that I have to cover is possible. I, I mean, again, I don't know if I'll be able to ever get back up to four plates on the squat because like some of these injuries are a little bit more chronic. But um, I think I should, I, I, look, my goal, this, this is it. I'm gonna announce it right now on my channel. I would love to get back to a point where I was kind of like 23, give or take, and I was doing three plates comfortably for eight to 10 reps. Like not buckling, not some ugly gross set for like one, two, three reps, but actually comfortably doing sets of eight to 10 reps for three plates. That would feel pretty nice. So obviously there's still quite a bit of room to go. I mean, right now, my most recent workout being 265 to 315, that's 50 pounds to go. So I don't necessarily know when that's going to happen, but I think at the current pace I'm going, and right now I'm still feeling pretty good. I'm spending like 20 minutes before every workout on like stretching and mobility and just trying to mitigate, you know, sort of like these, these knee and lower back minor injuries. I I think it is doable, probably within the next maybe six to eight months if I keep it up consistently. And yeah, I'll just leave it at that. The last thing guys I wanna talk about is very random and it's very off topic for the rest of this video, but it at the end of the day is the most important thing that I wanna talk about because I think this is a lot more important than my squats. I was on, this is so random, this is years ago, I was on 4chan. For those of you guys that don't know, it's kinda like Reddit except 
a, a bit more fucked up. And I saw this post, and honest to God, I took a screenshot of this and I saved it on my PC, even though it's been like, what? Like, this is like two years old and I've been meaning to talk about it and I thought, you know what, screw it. Why not tackle this subject today? This guy posted a picture. I, get, I'm, I was kind of debating blurring him out and uh, I decided to keep it in because, I mean, well, if he put himself on the internet, I guess he doesn't care about it being public or whatever, so I guess it's fine. Either way, this individual mentioned, uh, he wrote, anyone else feel like a complete loner outcast? I thought things would be better when I was jacked. I trained for almost five fucking years. I have no friends, no girlfriend. I am a mental and a complete loser other than the fact that I can bench 130 kilos. What the fuck fit? I'll be honest, this is a common problem I see with our generation. I see it like in person. I see it with people on social media, the way they talk about training. And I will be perfectly honest, I have seen it in myself. Not, in, not today, thank God, not for years, but when I was younger, I think I did see it to a certain extent in myself, which is why I can relate to this. And I think a lot of you guys can as well. And I need to squash this shit right now before people put any more time and effort into this because the, the more this festers in your mind, the bigger of a problem it's going to become. This is the problem of people conflating fitness and everything else in your life just falling into place. I don't have a girlfriend because maybe he thought that if I'm jacked, I'm gonna attract women and then I'll just be better at talking to them or they're gonna be more attractive to me. Then I'm, I don't have, I guess, people close to him in terms of friendships because maybe he has a little bit of social anxiety, which again is unfortunate, but very common for a lot of people out there. And a big reason why people get in the gym in the first place to work on themselves and gain confidence. And so maybe he thought that if I get jacked, then people are gonna respect me more and then I'm gonna be able to like attract people to my circle and then build friendships. And I think a lot of people conflate that. And for example, um, just looking into some people a lot smarter than I am, uh, two really good individuals, for example, on this, on the topic of what makes you happy, what makes, especially men with our testosterone, what gives us the feeling of success? Two good examples of this. Um, I believe there's one, I've mentioned this guy multiple times on my channel. His name was Earl Nightingale. He was an author, a motivational speaker, a radio personality, like a long time ago. We're talking like the 50s. He's like Jordan Peterson half a century ago. And he would do these talks and I, I would enjoy them. And they still apply today, even though we're talking like what, 70 years ago? Because at the end of the day, like, yes, technology has changed. What we like and do and our hobbies have changed, but what makes us tick as men, as human beings at our very core, our 100,000 years of evolution for our, you know, ape mammalian brain, that in many ways hasn't changed. He would talk about how, this is one quote, it was, Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. If a man is working toward a predetermined goal and knows where he's going, that man is a success. If he's not doing that, he's a failure. Not necessarily, you know, like how awesome you are at it and not necessarily what that goal is, but if you consider that pursuit to be meaningful in your case and you're actually working towards it, you know, no matter how far away from it you are, that is considered success. And this ties very well into the second individual, which I think is a lot more popular, is Jordan Peterson. It turns out that the way your emotional systems work is that they only work if you have a goal. So you have a goal, whatever that is, and then anything that happens to you that puts you closer to the goal, that makes you happy. And it turns on your systems that make you go ahead, move forward, be attracted to. Anything that gets in the way of your goal, depending on its potency, produces negative emotion. Anxiety, frustration, disappointment, shame, guilt, anger. Once again, working towards a goal. Not necessarily even what that goal is or how far you are 
away from that goal, you know, let's say you want to bench 500 pounds and you're at 200 or you're at 300. It's that doesn't really matter. It's are you moving towards it? Are you going from 200 to 210, 220, 230, etc.? If you are working towards it and you see that day to day, month to month, year to year, whatever, you are going to feel more accomplished. And that's probably in turn for a lot of men going to make them feel happier. I see something, I want it, I'm working towards it. I see myself working towards it and you feel happy. And this all makes sense, but the problem the problem is, is that in this case, the goal you're working towards is, you know, this guy's benching 130 kg, 275 pounds. The problem is he was conflating that goal with, again, all these other social things which are not necessarily correlated. You know, if you think suddenly that you bench press, you know, three plates or something, women are going to flock to you, I'm going to give you a hard lesson. That's not going to fucking happen. Could it potentially help? Sure, sort of, but again, it's an indirect means to an end. Women are, I think, generally a little bit more attracted to men who are, you know, more physically fit, not because of the physical act, well, somewhat, but not fully because of the physical act of, hey, I like big biceps or a big chest or something like that. Is it like the actual, the volume, the mass of your bicep that attracts them? Not necessarily. I think to a certain extent, it's that kind of like, again, that evolutionary thing where women are attracted to someone who's bigger or stronger because he's more of a provider. He's more of a protector. But at the same time, I think the bigger thing is that if you're more jacked, they assume confidence. Confidence is what's so attractive, I think, from a psychological standpoint to so many women out there. So they assume if you're jacked, you're probably more confident. Right? Like the whole Johnny Bravo, you know, stereo, you know, archetype. Kind of like that Jack douchebag. Yeah, he's kind of an asshole, but he's big and strong and he's probably relatively confident. In some cases, overly confident. But they'd much rather have that than someone who's like psychologically frail and unconfident. I learned a long time ago that my physique pretty quickly actually reached a level where for 95% of women, I'm like, you're done, okay? in terms of muscle, in terms of strength, which at the end of the day, they, they really don't give a shit about. But legit, I have been with girls in the past who pretty much told me like, you're fine. In fact, if you go anymore, it's kind of like a bell curve. You've reached sort of the peak for me personally or for them personally anymore and it's gonna start to go back down because now you're getting a little bit too big, a little bit too veiny, a little bit too whatever it may be. So should you still work out? <laughs> Fucking yes, absolutely. Just understand that you should be doing it for the right reasons. You should be doing it to feel good about yourself, to feel, to feel healthy, to feel accomplished as you work towards a worthy goal. This is why I've competed in bodybuilding and powerlifting. Women don't give a shit about that. You think girls like you standing there at 6% body fat with your death face covered in some brown tanning goop? eating 1800 calories a day of rice cakes, not going out with them up, up until a bodybuilding show because I can't drink, I can't eat out, I can't do all these things. No, girls don't like that shit. They like, so like, I mean, either they want a guy who's just like, they want a dad bod who's like fun and confident, or they like a Chad who's kind of jacked, but what really is awesome about him is that he's fun and he's confident, not because he's necessarily jacked or shredded or he's got like a 8% body fat six pack. That's, in many cases, that's either a small cherry on top or it's nothing. And I want you guys to understand this because like you should absolutely still, I mean, I'm, I built my entire life and channel around fitness because it's awesome. It can have a tremendously positive impact on your life. Just not the impact that this individual is referencing. Either way, guys, this has been a long video. It's been a long rant. I'm going to end it here. Thank you for stopping by. Make sure to check out my protein. If you need to stock up on anything, use my code VITVIP. And I will check in with you guys in the next video, which I think is going to be pretty exciting because according to my tracking number, the home gym is almost here.